good morning all this presentation is from srm dental college ramaburam department of pharmacology i am dr vinodini i am going to discuss regarding the role of proton pump inhibitors in the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases peptic ulcer diseases before we see the role of uh, proton pump inhibitors in the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases first we'll see what are peptic ulcer diseases this peptic ulcer disease occurs mainly due to the imbalance between the offensive and the defensive factors and leads to the increase in the secretion of defensive factors and lead uh, this defensive factors leads to the erosion of the gastric mucosal layer leading to many symptoms like abdominal pain discomfort nausea vomiting and one of the causative factors which can also cause this peptic ulcer diseases is helicobacter pylori which is a gram negative bacteria so so what are this offensive and the defensive factors that are present in the gastrointestinal tract that are actually balancing the level of acid in our body so offensive factors are the h pylori helicobacter pylori which is a gram negative bacteria which affects the uh, gastrointestinal tract causing peptic ulcer diseases and the production of hcl gastric acid pepsin and the usage of the drugs like nsaids and corticosteroids there are some defensive factors that are actually uh, protecting the layer of gastric mucosa in our body and those are the prostaglandin analogs which plays a gastroprotective role and apart from that there are mucus secretion and the blood flow and bicarbonate secretion so when the offensive factors predominates there leads to the damage of the gastric mucosal layer causing erosion and development of peptic ulcer diseases so the primary offensive factor this is your hcl production so how this hcl is being produced and how it can be controlled will be discussed in the next slide and we saw that the primary uh, offensive factor which is playing a major role in the development of peptic ulcer diseases hcl production so there are different phases of this gastric secretion occurs Uh, what are those three different phases are cephalic phase gastric phase intestinal phase this cephalic phase is uh, accounts only for a shorter period of time and it occurs mainly due to the psychic stimuli that on seeing a uh, food or tasting or smell of the food will actually leads to the stimulation of the vagal nervous system leading to the 30 to 50% of the total gastric acid production then after that when the food has been taken when the food is entering the stomach the stomach uh, the food causes distension of the stomach plus uh, along with the food the other undigested proteins leads to the production of gastric acid It's this account this phase stays long for a 3 to 4 hours of period and this is the main phase of gastric secretion and in this phase 50 to 60% of the gastric acid has been secreted and next comes the intestinal phase after the gastric phase when the food has been in still in the undigested form and formed as a chyme and that chyme will be entering into the duodenum and that forms the intestinal phase so here the presence of or the production of the hcl is very less because it accounts only for 5 to 6% of the acid production because there is an gastroenteritis esophageal reflux which is actually preventing it provides a hormonal feedback and it prevents the hcl production so only minimal amount of hcl is produced in this phase and that accounts for 5 to 6% of the hcl production so if any acid if any drug has to act on this hcl production then they should be able to control all this phases of gastric secretion and in this slide we will see what how exactly the hcl is being produced in the with the help of the parietal cell and what exactly is happening in the hcl production 
This is a parietal cell that is present in the gastrointestinal tract. As we saw, there are stimuli, different phases, and all these stimuli will lead to the secretion of this neurotransmitters like acetylcholine. Acetylcholine will bind, will come and bind with its receptor, muscarinic receptor, and histamine comes and binds with the histamine receptor, and gastrin also comes and binds with its receptor. These three together comes and binds with their respective receptors leading to the production of HCL. How it is happening is, so this bicarbonate H2CO3 which is present in the parietal cell and which is being produced with the help of carbonic hydrate anhydrase will be splitting up into HCO3 minus and plus H plus. And this formed H3, HCO3 minus will get again secreted into the blood and then it leads to the uh, movement of the chloride ion from outside from the blood into the lumen of the gastric pH. So this CL will remain and uh, will remain unattended and it will combine with the H plus to form the uh, HCL. So so, potassium which is present inside the parietal cell will get secreted into the lumen and it causes increased level of potassium in the increased level of potassium in the gastric lumen. But the formed potassium again will enter into the parietal cell. Again this for increased level of potassium inside the parietal cell leads to the secretion of movement of the proton from the parietal cell into the gastric lumen with the help of the proton pump. This proton pump is otherwise called as the H plus K plus ATPH pump since it is this pump is driven by the energy given generated by this ATPH pump. So once this H plus has been moved into the lumen the wanted acidity is being produced when this H plus is combined with the HCl minus, Cl minus to form the HCl. So this is how the HCl gastric acid is being produced in the body. So the general management of uh, peptic ulcer diseases, there are three ways by which these drugs can act and to control or to treat the peptic ulcer diseases. The first group of drugs acts by actually decreasing the HCl secretion. Second group of drugs acts by uh, neutralizing the acid which is being produced and the third group of drugs actually try to form a protective layer and try to protect the gastric mucosa from the offensive factors. So management of peptic ulcer disease. Say so already told, by any of these three mechanisms these drugs are going to be used in the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases and when we are using these drugs the main aim of treatment is to relieve the pain and discomfort and accelerate the healing process of the eroded gastric mucosa and also to prevent the recurrence and complications in the peptic ulcer diseases. So the first group, the main group of drugs that are being used in the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases is our proton pump inhibitors. So what are this proton pump inhibitors? Many drugs are available in the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases. Even though many drugs are available, proton pump inhibitors plays a major role in the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases. So what are these proton pump inhibitors? What are the drugs that come under this? Omeprazole, S-omeprazole, Lansoprazole, Pantoprazole, Rabiprazole, Dextrabiprazole and Ilaprazole. All these drugs act by inhibiting the proton pump. Uh, even though H2 receptor antagonists was the first group of drugs to be used in the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases, these drugs have overtaken the place of H2 receptor blockers. As the name implies, these drugs are going to act on and inhibit the proton pumps otherwise called as H plus K plus ATPS pumps. These pumps are mainly needed or essential for the production of HCl because the final proton which has to be combined with the Cl- minus is being pumped out with the help of this proton pumps. So once these, this final step if it is inhibited 
they there won't be any production of hcl and that leads to the decrease in the offensive factors leading to the healing process it accelerates the healing process of ulcer so why these drugs have taken the first place so how they have dominated the h2 receptor blockers uh, is by they have a very longer duration of action and the inhibition of proton pump is produced by these drugs stays for is irreversible and for the new pumps to get generated it takes nearly 2 to 3 days for the new pumps to get generated so this way they are very effectively controlling nearly 80 to 90% of the acid secretion is being controlled or being decreased by the proton pump inhibitors and they are all able to inhibit all phases of gastric acid secretion also and this that's why they are very good in uh, the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases the roots of administration these drugs are being administered both orally and also in emergency cases iv also is available now we'll discuss the therapeutic uses wide array of uses where we can give this peptic uh, proton pump inhibitors so in general peptic ulcer diseases so gastric ulcer it may be a gastric ulcer if the gastric part is being affected and duodenal ulcer if the chymes if the acid is being secreted and eroding the duodenal part it is called as duodenal ulcer so both the case of gastric ulcer and uh, duodenal ulcer these drugs are very effective the treatment strategy so since they have longer duration of action one daily dosing is being advocated with the case of peptic ulcer diseases and in the case of gastric ulcer the treatment extends for 8 weeks whereas for duodenal ulcer 4 weeks of treatment is enough then h helicobacter pylori ulcer that is uh, if we know that the causative factor is helicobacter pylori then that helicobacter pylori has to be eradicated completely with the help of the antibiotics along with this proton pump inhibitors we have to combine two antibiotics and form a triple drug regimen in order to eradicate the helicobacter pylori induced peptic ulcer diseases so among the three drugs the two antibiotics uh, it may be amoxicillin or metronidazole tenidazole tetracycline or clarithromycin among the five two are being selected and being combined with the proton pump inhibitors and all these three drugs has to be taken twice daily that is morning and in the night for 14 days so <clears throat> after 14 days the antibiotics are being stopped and the symptomatic treatment is being continued with the help of proton pump inhibitors so in this way they are effective in the treatment of helicobacter pylori induced peptic ulcer diseases the next type of ulcer is nsaids induced ulcer we know that the one of the main uh, offensive factors for chronic uh, pain treatment the patients take nsaids so in that case nsaids they are inhibiting the prostaglandins which are the main gastroprotective uh, defensive factors which are protecting the gastric layer mucosal layer since these drugs acts by inhibiting the prostaglandins the gastric layer is getting eroded leading to the development of ulcer if the patient has to continue the treatment with nsaids then they can be given this proton pump inhibitors and that can be continued then comes the bleeding ulcer this bleeding ulcer uh, when excessive uh, erosion of the gastric mucosal layer leads to the development of bleeding so due to the natural mechanism the blood starts forming clot but due to the acidity of the gastric uh, mucosa it again leads to the dissolution of the clot so when we use this proton pump inhibitors it leads to the it aids the formation of the clot and thereby uh, heal the bleeding ulcer the mucosal layer which is affected will be start healing on the gastroesophageal reflux disorder this uh, in this phase along with the prokinetics this proton pump inhibitors are being used uh, based on the different stages of gastroesophageal reflux disorder it's a reflux disorder in order to avoid the reflux of the contents gastric contents and to treat the pain that is being associated with the this disorder these drugs are being used 
So non ulcer dyspepsia and the stress ulcer. In the case of non ulcer because the initial stage of peptic ulcer if it is being taken these drugs are effectively controlled to prevent the development of this dyspepsia into peptic ulcer disease. And then comes the stress ulcer. The stress ulcer in the ICU patients due to the excess physiological stress leading to the excessive secretion of cortisol. This other group of drugs which also causes increased secretion of HCL. In that case also uh, we can use this drugs as a IV drug infusion. These drugs can be used. Zollinger Ellison syndrome, it is a gastric tumor but uh, even though resection is the main thing which can be done and the main stay of treatment uh, to certain extent when we can use this drugs to control the gastric acid secretion. It's not possible to control the gastric acid secretion completely but to 60 to 70 percent of the uh, gastric acid secretion can be decreased. Aspiration pneumonia during as a pre-anesthetic medicament in order to prevent the aspiration of the gastric contents into the trachea this proton pump inhibitors are being used to prevent the aspiration pneumonia during surgeries as a pre-anesthetic medicament adverse drug reactions even though they are very good group of drugs to be used in the treatment of peptic ulcer diseases they also causes certain ADR so it's nausea vomiting loose tools headache dizziness abdominal pain muscle and joint pain or the mild ADR that are being associated with the usage of this proton pump inhibitors but on chronic usage when these drugs are being misused for a longer period of time so that leads to certain serious ADR and what are those ADR? There is the increased risk of hip fracture in the women especially. Why it is happening is it is decreasing the calcium absorption. How it is uh, decreasing calcium absorption is acid is gastric acid is needed for the calcium absorption. By decreasing the gastric acid the calcium absorption is decreased and also these drugs inhibit osteoclast function these two, two together leads to the increased risk of hip fracture so the other serious area are life threatening hypomagnesemia decrease in the calcium absorption leads to the secondary hypocalcemia and that indirectly leads to the hypomagnesemia which, which is a life threatening one leading to the uh, development of cardiac arrhythmias. So it may predispose the patient to cardiac arrhythmias. Since the gastric acid is getting decreased, this decrease in the gastric acid which are also playing a major role as a defense uh, in preventing the or uh, checking the growth of the microorganisms and other things in our body. Uh, the decrease in the HCL secretion will lead to increase the risk of respiratory and the enteric infections. But as the chance of community acquired pneumonia, nosocomial pneumonia is more common when the patient chronically uses this proton pump inhibitors. Hypergastrinemia, gastrin is one of the neurotransmitters which has been involved in the acid secretion. But since HCL is uh, decrease, HCL secretion is decreased, there is no negative feedback thing to control the secretion of gastrin leading to the hyper secretion and the development of hypergastrinemia. So all these are the adverse effects. Even though all these adverse effects are being seen when they are being used effectively, they are the best drugs to be used in the treatment of proton pump inhibitors. Thank you.